For my money. Clap. Clap. You know that Walker song? Probably. Sure, I'm that sure. sounds familiar. I'm about to say, I'm sure you know it. <laughs> was that on Dirt Flock of Rant? Or LeBron Flock of James? I think it was on his album, Flock of Ellie. We're not going to start this talking about Walker Flock. All right, my fault. My fault. But yeah, how should we start it? You want to start it or you want me to start it? I was about to say, look, we in the A, you know what I'm saying? I, um, I don't know. I thought this was going to be the start. We just talking shit and then get into it. <laughs> now, I mean, like, what's, your, what's the first thing we going to get into? Oh, the first thing we going to get into. Um, shit. We can establish who we are and what uh, what it is that we both partner in. Well, if y'all clicking on this, hopefully. Well, I guess. No, hopefully we are getting some motherfuckers who don't know who we are. I'm Malcolm. Facts. And I'm T-Rose. That's three yeah. T-Rose with three O's. You can find me anywhere. I'm Malcolm, but if you're looking for me, you'll probably be able to find me under Malcolm is Important. Malcolm is important. Facts. That's hey. weird when you say every syllable in important. Malcolm is important. Important. Yes. Yeah, I've had to Ooh. type your name out a million times, so yeah. I'm important. Wait. Don't, want, don't want to taint nothing. No, like the taint. Like, do shorties have taints, or is that just a nigga thing? Taints? Yeah. Okay, when I hear taint, I'm thinking of like that shit tainted. So what are you talking about? No, a taint, like the skin between your nuts and your asshole. That's what it's called? Yeah. The, I think. Uh, you making me second guess myself. Hey, I, thought hey, was, look, I thought that was universal knowledge. Nigga, no. Nah, no, nigga, that's that's spirit science. So your taint is all right. Protect your taint, people. Protect your taint. Right. <laughs> I was about to tell a wild story. We're not here for that. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I, it was a moment where I had to protect my tank. Hey, oh, we, no, they be calling it a gooch. What that's that? what I was. But is that, I think that's the same word. So then maybe the tank is between the pussy and the asshole. Gooch and tank are the same thing. Let me tell it. <laughs> I think that's true. Comment below if that's the truth Yeah please Let us know Cause I think that's the truth I'm not calling that area a tank Yeah fuck with my tank First of all I'm not That don't even sound right Man you be telling the shorties to fuck No that's what I said It don't even sound right <laughs> We see how T-Rose get down I can call her right now we, we, But no I got I had a funny joke You gonna hate me for it too So remember on the podcast <laughs> When we was roasting you Cause we were saying that you asked uh, Shorty to buy you Cactus uh, I mean uh, The Travis Scott vinyl and I was like, damn, that is Cactus Jack. Think about it. <laughs> I knew he wasn't going to like the job. <laughs> and they ain't not going to get it, but that's beside the point. That's nasty. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, we here outside of Ratchet Studios. We in the garage, as y'all can see. Facts. Um, we at the grill. I just had two burgers. That was fire. Facts, two burgers and some, t- some fries and some uh, grilled vegetables. Yeah. Now, if you seen the B-roll in the foil I had on the uh, on the grill, it was chopped up zucchini, portobello mushrooms, organic red and yellow peppers with some uh, red onions and seasoning and butter. And I love that shit. That shit fire. Yeah, it went in, definitely. Yeah. Threw some of that shit on the burger. That's what I did, too, this time. I don't usually do that, but I did this time. You don't? I've always done that. I nah. thought that was what you did it for. Nah, I just fuck with the veggies. With the veggies. Well, yeah, I definitely uh, threw that shit on there with the romaine lettuce, you know what I'm saying? Through the extra seeds. I even threw some of the sauce on the vegetables. Facts. See, I'll make a bowl because I usually have eggplant in there to go with it, and I'll have the zucchini squash to go with it, There's like the yellow ones. In it? Nah, but oh. when I when I do it with the eggplant and the zucchini squash also, that's when I'll just eat it in a bowl with the uh, jerk barbecue sauce I've been making. I should add a little kick to it, too. Yeah, facts, because I use the spicy one instead of the mild one this time. I said Janelle was like, yeah, nah, this shit was hot. She was like, it was good, but it was hot. <laughs> I was like, what was, what was hot about it? Sauce. Well, it's probably because I literally gave it a plate fresh out the fresh out the fries, and the burger was reheated or the bun. My fault. So temperature hot or spicy hot? Both. Like radio. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, we outside of Roger Studios. Uh, <laughs> anyway. That's T Rose. He own half of Roger Studios. Yeah. Uh, I believe I own the other half. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I believe that's correct. Yeah. I think that's but how that works. But we got to start even before Roger Studios because <laughs> well, when Grief had first started coming around, we was, I was having a conversation with him. And I was like, yeah, that was around the time I met T. Rose. And this is, and he's like, wait, what you mean, met T. Rose? He said, y'all niggas not brothers? And I had to explain to him. I'm like, we real brothers. We just not blood brothers. Like, And I'm sure anybody who probably meets us at this point probably wouldn't even really know the difference unless it was 
explicitly Still laid out for them. Uh, yeah. Like right now. Like especially folks we used to work with. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I was literally introduced. I'm like, that's my brother. Literally. Shit, when you pulled up yesterday at the studio, niggas, I was like, that's my brother. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, that's your brother. Yeah. Yeah. That's him. Yeah. That's, yeah. Until you meet us individually and separately. <laughs> yeah. Then you'd be like, oh. Well, let me tell you, some niggas still think that we brothers. Yeah. You probably <laughs> wouldn't know for real, for real, unless. Unless, like, what, our parents was around, maybe? Yeah, that's the only way. Yeah. yeah, that might be the only way you really found out. I don't know. You'd be like, why do they have two? Or unless you watch this interview. <laughs> yeah. Now you know. <laughs> like, oh, y'all niggas, like, hey, brothers. Like, or, no, like, not like, at all. Like, <laughs> like, nah, it's just... Not like that. Like, it, yeah. Being a nap do that to you. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Something like that. But it's crazy, though, how we always talk about, like, how close we grew up without even knowing each other. Facts. Cause like also we didn't meet too after we graduated high school. Literally didn't know he went to Pike. Malcolm went to Pike. I yeah. went to North Central. And if anybody, if you don't know, we from Indianapolis. That's yeah. in Indiana. Facts. So we Midwest niggas. But Facts. Pike is a high school. It's a township school on the northwest side. And uh, a little bit more west than north, but yeah, definitely more west than north. What is it off like? I was, I was off 71st in Georgetown. So I was just gonna say 71st, right? Like Zion, in Zionsville too. It's in that in that okay. square. So yeah, Pike yeah. is more northwest. I went to North Central, which is more northeast. Facts. So I didn't really familiarize myself with nobody outside of North Central until post high school, post graduation, which was the same year we met, which is 2015. Yeah, facts. So we met, we, we even didn't meet during the school year. By the time we were met, we were already graduated. We were high school yeah. graduates. Shit, I was in college. When I was like, yeah, actually, he was yeah. in college. Actually, he went to ISU and That's I Indiana almost State went. University with uh, facts. I'm Larry Bird and like know us. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> shit, they, if you know Larry Bird, they'll know, they'll know. It's fair, fair. And I was telling somebody uh, recently when I went there, I only went there for a semester. So mm -hmm. like, I don't got no loyalties or nothing like that to the school or nothing. No fond memories either. But I was saying, I was like, it would be a funny-ass prank to get a big-ass Magic Johnson jersey and put it on the Larry Bird statue. <laughs> and I'm not even a sports nigga, but I just thought that would be hilarious. I feel like, like do it like Do it like on, a, on, a, on the morning of like a game day well, where everybody like, going into the arena. Yeah. Like that would be a funny-ass uh, Indiana joke. <laughs> Naptown joke. Just something simple like that. Yeah, yeah. Did you do it? No, nah, I never did. <laughs> but yeah. I will say they had this like mandatory community service day, like the first week mandatory. of school. Mandatory. Yeah, for like all freshmen. So, all right. We align. We lined up. We there for attendance. It's me, one of my roommates, and then it's the homegirl at the time. And we lining up. We like there for attendance. She a part of a different group. Uh, me and the homie. We was a part of me and one of my roommates. We was a part of another group. Mm hmm. But as they finish, everybody's getting on the buses. We lock eyes from across the group. And as I start, after they done broke my name down for attendance and they wrote the homie name down for attendance, bro mm -hmm. ended up, I think bro ended up still going. But me and the homegirl ended up locking eyes. So as motherfuckers get on the bus, I'm walking around the bus and crossing the street to go back to the door. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, I'm not doing this bullshit. <laughs> so then as I'm doing that, I see her crossing the street too. So then we link up and we skipped out on that shit. Y'all niggas linked up on the... <laughs> yeah, we linked, linked up and skipped out Say on the mandatory community service. So that's the type of shit I was on. I was doing that. I was smoking bad weed, 15 a G from the homie... Uh, bad 15 a G? Yeah, dog. That's Terra Hope for you. Like, they had bad 20 a G weed. Yeah, bro. Yeah. We used to have to go to the dorm where they had the mess hall at to cop from the homie KJ out the stairwell. Mm. Shout out to KJ. Oh, wait, That's my know, nigga. I know this ain't the K. Never mind. It's not the KJ I know. Nah, we ain't gonna get specific either because he was yeah, trapping. Yeah, but okay. But yeah, that was the homie. Um. So then while I'm at, while I'm doing that, uh, the homegirl is talking to a bro you used to work with on Snapchat about linking up and doing uh pictures and videos and stuff. But at the time, me and her shared equipment because mm -hmm. I had most of the camera equipment. Mm -hmm. So then she had brought me in on it. And then one time we had came back to nap was when uh, bro had hit me up and then we linked up. And then that's when we met. Facts. Because I was like, what? Yeah, I was 20. August? 
That had to be like August, September 2015. 2015, yeah. Because like, yeah. And then, because I I don't know why, but I'm still thinking the first, like I really recall the first time we actually like linked up, linked up was when I had my crib, but that wasn't until the top of 2016. No, nah, that wasn't the first time. That was probably I know like the that wasn't the time. first time. Yeah, it was early. It was in the early yeah. times. Because we lived up right then. I had my crib. That's crazy. I didn't even meet you till LJ was already gone. Literally. Yeah. It was like maybe a month or so later. Apparently. Yeah, fact. And I didn't find out about this until, you know, later on. It was like every year since we known each other, I found something out new <laughs> about this nigga or his impact or his, or anything that he had to do involved with you and your Like, we were just talking there. Literally, we were just talking about it. They're cleaning like, the bones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn. I did not use to clean it like, like in that method. But now I've done that for so long. That shit down there is how I clean up all. <laughs> I'm going to have to, uh, if that's not popularized, I'm going to have to popularize that for the next generation of like stoners that come up. Facts. Facts. Hopefully. I realize the new generation of stoners is totally different. Like it's really, we're witnessing a new generation. Like I was talking to this younger shorty. She was probably like, she might have been 22, 23. And she said she smoked her bong till it gets too dirty and she throws it away and get a new one. Excuse me? She Indeed. Got, got it like that? She was smoking glass ones? The plastic ones? What's she doing? I think she a was bowl? going between plastic and glass. But buying a new one every time is crazy. Yeah. How long is, did you ask her how long it usually lasts? I didn't want that answer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair. That was the one and only time I hung out with her. Understandable. Yeah, no. Based off that with. conversation yeah, alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. no. I, feel with. I got standards. Sometimes, most of the time. <laughs> oh, you've been doing great, Lil. You've been doing great. Yeah, come on now. You've been we doing great. We out here. Come on now. Yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. We're doing better. So then from fucking August, September 2015 mm-hmm. to, like you said, linking up at your first apartment, that was when we started getting work in. That was when During we started that getting short stint, that was a lot of work being put in. Because I only had, remember, I only had that crib for maybe five months. Yeah. Maybe four or five months. And you only had what? One like complete production credit where like the beat was just made by you at that time? Uh just solely me? Yeah. Cause I think yes. I, I think it was just listen, all the other joints was like Coke production credit. Yes. Yeah, okay. Facts. Yes. So at that time you right. That was the only sole production by me. It's just listen. And that was right before I got really good with editing. Because that was right when I started using Adobe. That was? Yeah, 2015. Really? Yeah. Because my whole high school career when I was in uh, radio and TV doing video editing, I would use Final Cut or I would use... And before Final Cut, I was using uh, this shit called Pinnacle Studios. I've never heard of it. It, it was some shit through Avid. Through <laughs> It was some shit through Avid. I didn't know Avid had video shit. Dog, they shit. shouldn't. The way they, they shouldn't. Be they shouldn't. Are we talking to save Avid for Pro Tools? Avid, yes. Damn, that's through Avid. Yeah, I didn't know they had visual shit. Yeah. Damn. It was this shit called Pinnacle, Pinnacle Pro Studios, and I would uh, I had like the platinum version, and I remember I had the disc. I got that shit for Christmas one year because yeah. I was I graduated from because when Movie Maker switched from Windows Movie Maker to Live Movie Maker, I didn't fuck with it. I ain't fuck with the live version. Now, like kids, y'all don't even remember. The old Windows Movie Maker, back when you could import different shit, and they had the pre-made effects where you could have the color changing yeah. as you do it, as like for all the jerking it. videos and shit back in the day. Bro, niggas used to edit full videos in music, Windows Media Player, bro. Dog, Windows Movie Maker made me. That's why I learned. That's what. That's why I made my bones. That's why you okay. I made my bones in Movie Maker for right. sure. Switching over to Avid, I thought was like the greatest upgrade. Because the way you could do the text, the way it had the pre the uh the previews and the overlays with the uh with the new effects that you wanted to add on to it, you could see what it was gonna do before you like actually pulled it over. So just the whole workflow and work process made it feel like you had stepped up. Yeah. But that was when that was cause this was I got that when did I get Avid? I wanna say I got Avid at the end of twenty twelve for Christmas. So you went from you went from Avid to Pinnacle. Well, Avid and Pinnacle. Yeah, I was, yeah, Pinnacle. I went from Pinnacle to Adobe. From Windows to Pinnacle to Final Cut Pro. To Final Cut. Because right. I was Final Cut Pro was what I was using in high school. That's what I did for the uh, 
That you used that for the uh, the golly shoot? That's what I did for golly. Gotcha. Yep, that's what I did for. See, because Pinnacle is where I made Summer Nights. Wait, wait, wait. What's Summer Nights? Summer Nights is the first explicit episode of Good Vibes. Because yeah. everything before that, I used to cut out all illegal activity. Mm-hmm. Illegal activity just being like, and I used to like, damn it, I cut out cussing and shit too. Yeah. So but you made them all clean type shit. Yeah, so then I had a whole summer of explicit footage because niggas was smoking hella dope that year. <laughs> And then I ended up putting together that documentary. Ever since then, I was like, fuck it. We just, we gonna be real. If you don't want to be on, if you don't want to be real, then get out the way of the camera. <coughs> that was kind of how that shit ended up. Yes. Um, so, you know, yeah, I dropped that. I'm dying. Hold on. Go ahead. <laughs> what? I'm dying. Oh, this nigga dying. <laughs> yeah. So then at the, uh, after I dropped that Good Vibes episode, I mean, that Good Vibes documentary, Summer Nights. Mm-hmm. Because that was around the same time I got this logo designed. Wow, oh, the original Good Vibes. The Good Vibes flag, yeah. And I got some other shit. Some other shit designed, too. Shout out to the homie Trey. Um, yeah. So ever since then, it was up. I think I dropped that. It had to be like fall 2013. Summer nights? Mm-hmm. Because it was all summer 20, 2013. I don't, I don't remember that. Yeah. I have to watch it again. I don't remember that one. I'm then I've seen, I've probably seen every good vibe. I don't oh, know. yeah, you've seen Summer Nights, too. Okay. You've seen it, All too, right. yeah. Yeah, I don't remember that one, but that's 2013. So now we're in 2013. Yeah. In so 2013, that's Final when you was, in, you was in Mr. Hendrix's class? 2013, yes. I was in sound, was it sound and music production? Something like that in JEL class. Okay, was it Hendrix? That was your teacher or was it Henderson? Hendrix was my teacher. Okay, Henderson, Henderson was my was teacher. The one across the yeah, hall. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, know, I know, yeah, I did. Yeah, them niggas, yeah. first of all, they fly for that. They put Mr. Hendrix and Mr. Henderson right, <laughs> right in the across. same hallway across from each other. What did audio, what did film? So what did like, film? And I was in Henderson's class one day. Actually, I've been there a couple of times. I've had to stay in there because they did like a cross, damn near like a cross class situation. So like I remember actually when I when I ended up doing JEL in 2014. Uh huh. Wait, what'd you go for? I mean, well, film animation. Film animation. Yeah, that's why I was in. That's why I was across the hall. Wait, so it's like you. we went to different high schools, but there was a program at my school where we could get on a bus after fourth period, and we would drive over to a different school, which would happen to be T Rose School, to take certain classes like. Auto body shop, uh, culinary arts, welding, dental assistant, welding, uh, and like film animation, film animation, and the music production. Facts. So I signed facts. up for the digital editing class. They didn't have; they only had that in the morning. So they had. So mm-hmm. I, when I went over there, it was an afternoon. So then I had to end up getting the film animation. And that's how you got in there. Why, wait, why couldn't you do the morning though? Because you, um, the buses don't go there until after fourth period. Oh, that's ass. Yeah. Yeah, because your electives being the, not your electives, but your core classes. Are my normal. core classes was in the morning, like that's how they did okay. it. Uh, I, I I guess, but I, they could have shifted that shit around. But I feel like they could, but I think they just why they just built their own shit. Probably, probably. Yeah. But yeah, like he said, that JEL uh, building was connected to my school, so all I had to I was just go to school and then go to my uh, selected JEL class. Which would be sound production. I went during the 2013, 2014 school year. So you said you went during the 2014. So you was a senior when you went. No, I was a junior. So you went to 2013, 2014. But you know it's that only was one a semester. Junior year. Yeah, but you only went one semester, though, right? I went both. You went both? Yeah. Damn. Okay, did so it's just me. Semester? I only did one semester. Yeah, I, I did go back. both. I did go both. Yeah. I was sick. Because junior, uh, my junior year, I had. One of my core classes was at North Central because I had senior year English in 11th grade. I had 12th grade English in 11th grade. At North Central? That's how I'm cool with some of the North Central folks that's older than us. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I still don't understand that. So I took 12th grade English twice because I took it in 11th grade and I took it in 12th grade. Yeah, so why did you take it? Yeah, I, I don't know. I had to because I didn't get no 11th grade English credit at Pike. Yeah, it was stupid. That I don't know that. how they... I, 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 don't right, ask me, dog. Yeah, I, I don't we know. here now. I Shout out to Mr. Clips, though. Mr. Clips. You said fuck that nigga? No, I, I, I don't. <laughs> no, I, I honestly, I'm trying to remember who that is. That's it. <laughs> I remember one time he told me because his family uh, is the Clips. 
The Clips niggas. Like the speakers, the sound. He said, them niggas is dickheads, though. But hold on. He's like, fuck I feel, my cousin. I feel like I honestly know who this guy is. No, he had a beer. He talked kind of loud. He's an English teacher. His shit. His classroom was literally right there in the hallway that connected JEL to North Central. Like right before you turn that corner and go down the hallway that goes to North Central. Yeah. It's right there, right before you turn the corner. His class was over there. As soon as you come into the JEL building, boom, first class on the right. Hmm. That was his class. Okay, I know what you're talking about, but I couldn't, I never went in there. It was like a computer lab class. It was weird. I never had nothing in there, so I didn't. I always wonder why y'all niggas had English in a computer lab. Probably because all the English classes was full during the school day. Maybe. But I had that motherfucking (laughs) class with like niggas from HSC and then hella North Central Mm, niggas. Yeah. I'm sure it was a lot of fucking North Central population seeing as though it was connected to that shit. Yeah. Like, it was only two other folks in the class besides me that wasn't a North Central student. Hmm. I heard some of the worst music ever in that class, too. Because two of the homies in that class had music production the same period I had film animation. Because yeah. English was this last class. Right. So, we are going up there. I'm like, hey, what y'all work on today? So, I'm in here listening to shit. Because, you know, I've always been tapped in with artists and creatives and shit. Facts. True. Man, I heard some of the worst music ever. <laughs> I'm like, so, they not teaching y'all shit. Cause this is mixed terribly. This just sound like well done. Why you just- terribly? <laughs> Dog, go listen to well done right now. I'm, about Tiger. I'm okay, actually. I'm okay. Tiger. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I don't want to listen to Tiger. <laughs> but yeah, so going from yeah, so I would be. So wait, did you go? So you went both semesters. I was. I guess I was because I only went one, and that was the 2013 year. Like I ended. I started this school year with that semester, that that class, and then I went until winter break. But when I came back in 2014, I didn't have that class no more. That's why I'm. You're like, making hey. me second guess myself now, but I don't remember any other class I would have had. <sighs> yeah, crazy thing is, the only reason I know I did because I remember asking, "How can I get this class again?" But, but I was in film animation, so y'all might have been one semester. Mom might have been two. That is true. That is true as well. You're right. I just remember asking. I was like, nigga, this is easy. Plus, this is actually what I want to fucking do. Why would I only do this for one semester when I can do it for, like, I'm already here. You know that I'm capable of it. Because, I mean, I passed that shit with flying colors. Like, you know who I called earlier for the uh, the catch-up trick? Yeah. She used to uh, go to JL too. So you might have known her before too. Really? Mm-hmm. See, all the past. Have yeah, we was on the bus. Like, we was on the bus together a lot. Well, shit, I didn't even know that you went to JL until we established it. So mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, don't but know. it might have been one of those situations where like folks might have came across each other, but because we didn't know each other, it wasn't registered to no memory. And I'm not the nigga who's gonna like remember what folks look like. And like I and like I said, that was junior year. I had an afro, nigga. I was only in slides, and I was high as fuck or sleep. Understood. And I'm so about to say, right. I wasn't worried about nothing but getting to class or... And you was bald and smiling. And bald and smiling <laughs> slash frowning. And, yeah, looking at, uh, yeah. What was you looking at? Hoes. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, ass, boy, I'm telling you, hey. It'd be like that. Hey, uh, man. School was about the hoes. That's what they didn't tell us. That's what they don't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm not gonna tell you but that's what they don't tell you but nonetheless <laughs> yeah so that's where I was I was in sound production uh, with Mr. Hendrix I did that for a semester that was my first time using Pro Tools was 2013 2013 is also the same year I found out and discovered that I was going to be a producer so was you using FL before you started using Pro Tools or like Pro Tools was what cracked it off or was you using some bullshit online that you downloaded? Very first doll that I used was some bullshit online. Like what? Like I like some mixed craft bro bullshit? Shit? It was worse than that. Worse and than honestly, that. to this day, I've been looking for it because I want to. I wanted to have it like old file for some shit like this to tell the story of, but I can't find it. It used to be. I used to after school. I used to uh, get out the bus stop and I would go to my grandparents' crib. Now, I would use my papa's computer. He would have it set up in his office. Where'd they stay at? They would be off of 51st in Michigan. 
Fifty first Michigan Road. Um, shit, I showed Grieve when we went. Um, when we went back here recently, I showed him like. You gotta show me, nigga. I know where that's at. I know where you know <laughs> okay. where it's at. I'm showing him because he just wanted to see where niggas was. You know, when niggas was on when they was kids and shit. So I showed him that. But yeah, I was be over there after school and so like I knew not to really mess with the computer because I know he used it a lot and I know my grandma used it a lot. But I was like. At the school, I'm like, I ain't really trying to go outside because it's hot. And two, I ain't trying to sit here and be bored. So, I mean, like, shit, let me get on and do something. This is before everybody had Netflix accounts. This was still around the time where, like, parents was, like, weird about using their credit card on the computer. Oh, facts. Yeah. Facts. They were, that's what they were most afraid of, you using their credit card on the computer type Man, shit. Man, you know how much how much of a struggle it took me? Like, I had to get the yearly Xbox Live because you could only convince them to do that shit, like, once a year. <laughs> Man, when and, that shit came around, I, I was down there on my own. Well, shit, well, before... Because I got the first iteration of the Xbox. So we going back a little bit because... Mm-hmm. When, before, by the time I found video editing, my Xbox was just uh, there to collect dust. So 2009, when I started editing videos, that next year was eighth grade. That's when I sold my Xbox. Because I was like, I'm not using this motherfucker. I'm editing videos. I'm on YouTube. Mm. Like, I don't need this to play. So you the first Xbox in 08? I mean, eighth grade? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Was that eighth? Wait. Xbox 360. That's what I meant. The first of the Xbox 360. Okay. Yeah. All right. Got you. Yeah. Damn. Man. So it's like, um, so that shit went out the window real quick for me. So I was just, and like I said, it was hard to get uh, them to put in their credit card information on, on their computer. So I was using Windows Movie Maker. It came with the computer. My grandma bought everybody. Because uh, one year, my grandma bought everybody a desktop, except for Marty and I think Adriana. They got laptops that year. Cause they That's got laptops. crazy. Yeah. Everybody gets a computer. Yeah. She was Oprah. <laughs> You get a computer, you get a computer, you get a computer, like, you get a phone, you get a cell phone. That's... You get some... Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, she was going crazy. Shay. Shout out to her. <laughs> yeah, Nani. We got a plane going over. We outside, so it's going to be a little bit of noise. But Sorry. we here. Yeah. Appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. Boy. See, then we 30 minutes in. We only in 2016. Shit. Are we in 2016? We still in 20... Well, we no, got we 2016. In my right, story, you're right, yeah. You're right, yeah. you're right, you're right. So, right okay, so you started using Pro Tools. So when did. did you... So when did you realize that when you went to the crib and you looked up that price of Pro Tools that you was going to say, shit, I got to find something else? Because I know that's what it was. They had that shit for free with the iLock at school, but but taking the, taking the goddamn shit out the computer and taking it home don't work. I tried Not it, trust a, me. Nigga. You, I, I tried it. I've tried it. It don't work, yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Like, yeah, that shit does not work as easy definitely as Definitely try to steal Pro Tools out the editing bay. Bro, I definitely... Mr. Hendrix, look, bro. <laughs> I, I know you're going to see this at some point, but like... <laughs> It wasn't you. It, I was looking at it as though I was doing it to fulfill my passion. That's yeah, all I was come doing, on now. man. Like, and I know you understand. So, like, it's nothing against you. But I definitely tried to take an eye lock to the crib. Like, not understanding that the iMac and a Windows don't even fucking work like that. So, first of all, trying to use that eye lock on a Pro Tools program that is only made for Mac. Like I'm, I'm, yeah, bro. I'm just, I'm sorry. That's when we learned about the op- difference in operating systems and shit like that. That's how I learned. Yeah, that's definitely how I learned, like the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> so but, yeah, that shit was uh, Pro Tools. That's that was the first one. That, that was my first time, 2013. That is also where I first. That ain't where I produced though. I produced in that website that I was telling you about. So that, how did you get? Did you just use pre-made sounds from the website? So you yeah. were just making electronic music? I was making straight bullshit. You was making flow rider beats? I was making, yes. Damn, yeah. Tiro's wanted to be Bad Bunny's producer. <laughs> it was Bad Bunny before Bad Bunny. But I also made like a, I think I remember it was like a Frank Ocean and Weekend type beat. That was like one of my first beats. And that's when you was doing the piano shit on Instagram or is this after? Oh. Um, this before? I started doing the piano recording shit around 2014. Okay, so it was right after you got into a groove of like creating music. Creating music for sure, because by that time I also was in piano class. I had taken a piano class, which was the same year. Okay, so in 2013 I had took sound and music, and then 2014 I that was my other elective, which was the piano lab. So I took, you had piano at school. Yeah, what the it fuck? was like so. 
right before going down to that tunnel where J- okay so i'm saying it's like you know what the fuck north central's layout is it's in a it's in a hallway that happens right to be right before the uh the 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 connecting tunnel the connecting tunnel yeah right. that's the class i took that was a piano lab so i took that during 2014 and i also was posting videos of me playing piano during they said niggas used to smoke weed in the bathroom off the tunnel and shit indeed <laughs> i was I ain't never went over there. I was trying to get locked no, up. Like, it was n- like, if you cross bro. this line, it's over with. Bro, I was like, All niggas right, was wild, bro. Niggas was smoking under the tunnel, like the passway, like where it's open. Niggas was smoking there, like around the corner of there. Niggas was smoking in oh, See, the- I was smoking on my way to the building. <laughs> I wasn't doing that. No, them niggas was smoking there. I remember a nigga sparked <laughs> up in the, in the stairwell at the, like, we was in the far right. Uh, corner of the school and some nigga there's a stairwell in that corner some nigga sparked up up there nigga you smell it through the whole hallway I was far down the hallway nigga we was in class watching a movie see I done smoked weed in school a few times but I, that sounds wild to say <laughs> that sounds wild to say I was smoked weed in school a few times but nothing as blatant as that like the most the worst shit I did was like it was raining or it was windy Mm-hmm. And before I walked out of the doorway, I like sparked up my black to smoke while walking to the student parking lot because Marty was picking me up. Gotcha. Damn, the black days was terrible. Yeah, I was. Yeah, we was. I was dusty. We didn't have to talk about that. But it's so funny hearing to. you talk about like the different music shit because like I've worn so many fucking hats because even in telling yeah, my story, even that. telling my story <laughs> back when I first started editing videos when we was making jerking videos, like I said in two thousand and nine. Right. I we was I was also engineering and I was rapping back then. Me and Billy would make music. We would make songs and shit. You do have a history of being a recording engineer and a uh, yeah. bit of a mix engineer as well. Man, it wasn't <laughs> good, but I did it. And we was using a rock band microphone and recording mix craft. Or we would this use is... the Xbox microphone. Hey, this is why Ratchet Studios tagline is we work what we got over here. Yeah. Because niggas been making it work with what we got since, forever. as you can see, forever. <laughs> like, that's uh, crazy. My mom had this little uh, Nikon Cool Picks, a pink one. Like a camera? Yeah, I think she got it for her birthday or for Christmas or something. I think I remember when that commercial dropped for that Man. shit. Man. <laughs> and they had slide, showed it sliding in your pocket and shit? Yes. Dog. <laughs> yes. And we kind of like. We were like, Mom, can we use your camera? And like, that's what I made my bones on when it comes to actually me going and editing. Now, back further back, we had this camcorder that took tapes that okay. I got from Nani, and we would record skating at the skate park and shit. So, like, Do you I've still have those? Been, what? The tapes. No. Once, okay, so I had this little. Remember when the mini book bags was cool? The mini, the little the small packs. ones, yeah. yes. So Marty had a few of them. Okay. And I, he had gave me one. Okay. And I had put all my skateboarding equipment, all my camera equipment in there because we'd be at the skate park recording. Well. We was at Castleton one time and we got new skateboard wheels. So we sitting outside by Borders in between Borders and H&M changing our skateboard wheels and trying our shit out. And I left the bag sitting on by the flowers and shit when we left. I didn't realize it till we was like, Passing the the standalone Dick Sporting Goods on 82nd. Not right. the one that's the one that closed down. Not the one that was in the mall. But remember the standalone one that's like by rooms to go and shit. Okay, yes, like kind of yes, by uh, yes. my, uh, past Chuck E. Cheese, but I know like what you're talking about. headed to the west side. I'm about to say my uh, headed back to the west side. Yeah, mom's friend's kid used to work there. Yep. So uh, we didn't realize so I was like back right then, and I said something about it, and my dad was just he was just so convinced that somebody had already taken it, so he didn't want to turn around and look for it. Your dad was convinced? Yeah. Damn. Maybe you didn't. Right? <laughs> Damn. But it was crazy because next time I went to the mall, which was probably like two, three weeks later, I was looking for it outside in the area. Mm. Just on some hopeful shit. Yeah. Gone. My old skateboard wheels, my, my tapes. I want to say the camera. All that shit. Damn. Gone. I was all the distracted, dumbass kid. I mean, shit, hey, man. I was hype over my new skateboard. I still got uh, those skateboard wheels. Them new wheels on my board. To this day. Yeah. Damn. Well, I mean, shit, hey, I'm about to say, look, win some, we lose some. Yeah. I lost them. That same class is when I lost my first laptop. It's when I got finesse. Damn. Yeah. And you had music on it? 
Uh-huh. Yeah, I, see, that had my first recording. <laughs> the pitfalls of losing shit, dog. Cause yeah. I didn't had I didn't had broken SD cards. Cause I used to keep my I used to keep my SD cards in my wallet before I had a holder, and was sitting on the motherfuckers. Oh, just either the lock would damn. either break off or they would crack a little bit. Oh, they would crack. Yeah. So I put in an SD card reader, it wouldn't read it no more. So I don't lost footage that way. I don't lost footage to my external hard drive becoming corrupted. I don't lost footage from my computer getting a virus. Damn. I don't lost footage Facts. from. I'm definitely lost. I don't lost that. footage from the. Uh, the editing software crashing and corrupting the files. Like, I don't lost footage every way you could think of from somebody formatting the SD card where I didn't clear off yet on, the, on another camera. So, because I know we both lost a lot of significant uh, shit in our craft. Like, I've lost a lot of music. You've lost a lot of footage. How much footage do you think you've actually lost overall? Like, be real. If you could guess... <laughs> Probably 128 gigs. Shit. Do you even have a SD card that large? Yeah. Okay. I'll you shouldn't, that. but I do. You shouldn't. It's Why shouldn't you? What the fuck? Because it's too much of a risk. Because something happens to that one SD card, now you lost 128 gigs versus just losing 64. The same view can be looked at on the 64, you know what I'm saying? But I hear, I do understand. Losing 128 gigabytes worth of but footage. But if you got three... 64 gig cards. Yeah. And sometimes happens to one of them, you still got two. 128. If you have two 128s, when something happens to one of them, you lost half your footage. This is perspective. You're right. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Hey. So, like, going from those days to... Because I always thought I didn't rap for real until I met y'all niggas. But when I think about it, I was always writing raps. I just never really had the confidence to record it after me and Billy stopped making music together. So you saying that, that happened, that is literally how what we now have as Ratchet Studios came about. Yeah. You. So wait, let's go to, let's go, let's finish in 2016. Oh. So after we met Uh, in the end of 2015, and then you got your spot in 2016. uh Uh-huh. I said wood lake. Yeah, we was putting, uh. We was putting together we was putting together a lot of work. We wasn't getting much music video shot, but we was building outside of music as far as the vision niggas wanted to create and we were getting like vlog footage. Facts. And y'all was still creating music. Facts. So then in in the time period where uh Woodlake wasn't a thing no more and y'all went to Tennessee, mm. mm-hmm. I have fell back in line with Juan and Sean and them. And Bree and Marcus and I was out east making good vibes with them while y'all was gone. So that's okay. what I was recording. This so when Sean was working on his first project. This is uh, Psycho Killer, Ice Tray, uh, producing all this shit. This is like see why coming around dropping a verse every once in a while. This is Juan putting <laughs> together his first project. So this is Gato is still rapping. Niggas is active. Yeah. Got this you. is uh shit. Even Marty was still recording back then. Damn. We're still recording back then. We're like, uh, yeah. What a time. Damn. So when y'all finally came back, Mm -hmm. I was always split. So like on a day where I didn't work, it was like, I'm with them till y'all hit me up. Or I'm with y'all till they hit me up. Got you. Got you. And then when that wasn't a spot no more and everything kind of fell flat, and then I ended up moving out, that's when... We built the studio. And so now we in February, March, February, 2017. Now, what was it that fell flat again? Well, after, when we came back from Tennessee? Well, because we didn't have a spot for everybody to link up at. We were just Facts. linking up at folks' parents' crib, like when motherfuckers weren't really True. at home. True. Or we was like linking up at random smoke spots. But we didn't have no central location for real for, for folks to create for at. everybody to pull up at. Yeah. So the Ratchet Studios would not exist until... February, March of 2017. Yep, because that was when I was working at Best Buy and I was working at the hospital. Because then I was using my Best yep. Buy discount to get a lot of the equipment to build Ratchet Studios. And, I will, I, and then you brought over your monitors and I uh, got that mic from De Haven and I used the mic stand and uh, the shit I got from LJ and Gatto. And then I had, I had, by this time, I had bought FL. I bought FL12, the producer version. So by this point, I'm getting lifetime updates to FL Studios. Yep. So we and got I had the uh, 
and me and Marcus was splitting the Adobe subscription. Yep. So we always had Premiere and After Effects. Facts. But this was a time where I was still editing everything in After Effects, not realizing <laughs> I was using After Effects the way you're supposed to use Premiere. <sighs> Which is crazy. Yeah, because After Effects, you're just supposed to put different effects and certain edits onto a scene, yeah. and then you put it in the premiere to chop it up and put it all together. I was doing everything in After Effects. And then, okay, you was doing everything. You just didn't utilize both programs. Just... I wasn't using it right. Understandable. <laughs> Gotta learn. Trial and error. Yeah. Right. Trial and error. But that's the shit my radio and TV teacher always tried to tell me. Back when I was in high school, I just didn't listen. I remember you talking about this. I just never listened. He's like, I've been. So, like, shout out to Mr. Bob, but also fuck Mr. Bob at the same time. All right. We ain't even got to get into that. Yeah, yeah, nah. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. We ain't got to get into that. But, yeah, so we, um, at this point, like you said, we combined our uh, items that we had. I had the monitors and. Uh, and for people who don't know, monitors is are the studio speakers. This oh, is not. Facts. We're not talking about TV screens. Facts. When we say monitors. Not the actual screen. Yeah. These are monitors. We was using my damn insignia as the. The monitor. Facts. They're using a, that big ass uh, TV. Wasn't it chunky? That was a 37 inch uh, insignia TV. I bought that for myself on my 13th birthday. The first time I got into a car accident. The TV's from Muncie. 13. We used that shit. Well, nigga, what year was 13? <laughs> <laughs> what year was I 13? 2010. Same year I sold my Xbox. So yeah, that's a seven year old TV. Yeah. I love that TV. I was shitty when it, whenever it went out when we lived in Brownsburg. He's I, like, had the for, I had that motherfucker for 10 years before it went out. It was $300. That motherfucker was a steal. $300 for a decade. Facts. Can't beat that. That's that's hard. Shout out to Insignia. It was also the first month. Look, I wish we still had the TV. You could put that motherfucker up. That's in the history book. Yeah. So we've been working with what we got at Rutgers Studios. Facts. <laughs> first time we record, I still got the first cut we recorded. The first negative recorded at Rutgers Studios is Gato. In the closet. It was Gato. He was the first one to record? Yes. Are you sure it wasn't me? You sure it wasn't you? I was second because I, I wasn't confident. I was about to say, I don't think you was about to. Yeah. And then he got in the booth, laid his yep. verse down. Yep, I was on bullshit. You're so. right. I remember the verse, though. You remember your verse? I have it on my phone. Let me say that. <laughs> Let me say that. It's still in my say, phone. Ooh, he got his verse. <laughs> I, I, he got his verse shit, ready, man. Hold on. Nigga. Spit that shit. <laughs> Hell no. Hold on. See, I, I still remember my first... Not my first verse, but the first verse I ever wrote was a verse to Ludacris down in the Dirty South. No, it wasn't. It was to Lose Yourself. And I didn't recognize, so my ear's been so untrained, I didn't recognize that the Lose Yourself beat was the Lose Yourself song. So when I'm listening to it on LimeWire, I'm like, hey, Marty, I wrote a verse. He's like, to what? I was like, I don't know some Eminem beat, but it's a song I ain't never heard. So I started playing it to rap it for him. Yeah. He's like, nigga, this is Lose Yourself. I'm like, yeah, that's what it say, but what song is that? He said, nigga, you know that song. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> He's like, it's on 8 Mile. I'm like, no, it's not. So I couldn't recognize the song, the beat without hearing the song. You've done this. Now that it, that makes so much sense now. I've always been like that. That's that's crazy. I how? Recognize how? The beat. <laughs> no clue. How do you? <laughs> the same way I didn't know that Silent Rod was the same sample until Martin Dill pointed it out. Damn, that's crazy. Bro, it's just stuff like that. It just don't hit my ear. It's like when I'm not in that mode, I ain't in that mode. I'm in this mode. Damn. I don't know. I guess that's just like the normal for my ear. But the first shit like that. verse I was going to ever record in a studio when I first got in the booth ever, mm. I was probably like eight, nine years old. It was at my uncle's crib out east. And he had a studio at his crib. He recorded in Reason. Really? Yeah, he did. He used Reasons. Oh, and shit. Nice ass booth. Nice ass. Big ass iMac was the first time I like seen a real studio set up. Was at his crib out east. That's where we learned how to play pool at in the basement. Out east over there. Yep. Damn, you learned how to play pool out east. Yeah, facts. My uncle crib. Damn. And so you um, might be a little east out of here. <laughs> hey, look. Okay, Damn. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, yep. But then when I got in the booth, I was nervous, and I was like, my verse don't flow with the beat, and I think I just was nervous and didn't want to embarrass myself. Damn. And they, they was trying to boost my confidence up, but I was just like, nah. And I walked out the booth. And uh, Marty and Ricky ended up recording a verse to it and shit instead. Damn. So like, I was going to ask, did you get, I was going to say, well, you didn't record your verse. I was going to ask if you got on the track with your dad. Nah. But, my dad ain't never recorded on wax. That's wild. Right? Why? Uh, I mean, they didn't have studios back then. 
Yeah, you couldn't plug a USB up mic up to a computer at the crib. I understand, but you still could have. Rec- I mean, he ain't never been in the studio. No, my dad's from Michigan City, Indiana. Understood. I, there's but- probably two recording studios there now in 2023. <laughs> The way he was traveling, I'm sure he made a know somebody that possibly could have gotten this. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he probably could have. He probably could have. That's all I'm getting at. Like, he, he, he probably wasn't. His mom wasn't on that, probably. Understandable. He was in the, you know what I'm saying? that Back then, hip-hop wasn't about trying to do that type of shit. You're right. Hip-hop was about, nigga, the movement, the culture, the party, the function, the connecting with folks. The, I'm, was... making, I'm taking this break beat and putting it over that, and now the homie's on the mic rapping live at the function. Yeah. Cause when I talked to him, he's he um he mentioned that that like that's what he would more so do move the music that was coming out that was soon to be hip hop or ne- popularly known as hip hop. Mm-hmm. That's what he was doing, moving that shit around, having it before niggas even had it. He was damn near breaking records before it was really like a method of getting niggas out there. Yeah, my pops used to be in Virginia, and he used to be. He used to go to the East Coast. Remember he told me about his first time going to New York mm-hmm. and buying hella records and bringing it back to Michigan City mm-hmm. and playing shit that didn't end up on the radio until a year, a year and a half later. Type rapping shit. shit and niggas thinking it's his shit, but he's <laughs> DJing the records. But it's like, nah, this ain't my shit, but like, I will spit my shit type shit. Type shit. Okay. He was just telling me the other day he was a part of a clique called the MC Players. And MC Players. All there right. was, uh, I think he said two MCs and it was like three DJs. And he did both. He was MC and a DJ. And he was like, there was these other two DJs that um, his homies in his clique wasn't fucking with, but he used to fuck with them and he used to fuck with his homies. Wow. <laughs> so he was, was he kind of like the prime minister of the, of the shit? I mean, like I said on uh, on the project, he was kind of Ice Cube before Cube, writing records for folks, like writing records for a whole group of niggas, like selling records, I mean, selling rhymes to people on the street. Yeah. Like at school. That's a crazy hustle. Because who's saving their lunch money to come to school to buy ROMs? That means hip-hop really hit people in their soul. Niggas ain't doing that for no R&B or no rock music or no other bullshit genre y'all talked about y'all could live with. Nothing touched niggas. Expl- tell me one other genre where something like that could happen in the schools where it's touching the youth to the point to where niggas is saving their lunch money to come buy raps because they wanted to be involved with it. There ain't no other music genre that's happening for in our culture. Ever. Nigga, R and B has had the same thing, not in that method, but it has su- had the thing where it has such niggas to where they have sacrificed, <clears throat> excuse me, their monetary funds at school to be doing shit for R and B. Explain it to me. Expl- Explain it to me. Okay. Do you want to do this with the lights on, or you want to? What you want to do? Yeah, let's take a pause. We're gonna uh, fix the lighting because it's getting dark, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 